Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell and of course my, my business partner Hunter Williams with Bio Longevity Labs. Shout out to Bio Longevity Labs. And we're making this video here today to talk about the newest peptide research chemical uh, evaluation company uh, in the marketplace named Finric. And Finric is supposedly backed or supported by Naval Ravikant. Shout out to Naval. I know Naval for a long time now through Twitter, probably close to seven or eight years now. I don't know, neither does Hunter, are his real true involvement in the company, but evidently he is somewhat part of it from a financial standpoint. Uh, but we're here today to talk about them because obviously at Bio Longevity Labs, we stand for truth, transparency, and authenticity with all of our products and services. And of course, we have certificates of authenticity on all of our products because it is very important in a highly competitive marketplace. But there's definitely some stuff about Finric that Hunter and I found out about recently that you guys as the buying public and of course our customers and consumers really need to hear. So we're here to talk about that today. So Hunter, tell them what we have recently found out. Yeah, well, first of all, I applaud what Finric is doing. I think the more transparency we have in the marketplace with research chemicals, it's a better thing for everybody. So I applaud them, but I did want to mention something because it was brought to my attention that I think BioLongevity Labs is rated like a D or an F. And obviously anything that Jay and I put our name on, we don't want it to be rated on D, and F, D or F anywhere. So no. I actually started digging around on the site and trying to figure out why were our products rated D or an F because we get third-party testing done on all of our products and it always comes back 99% plus purity with the correct amount in the bio. So what I noticed is I went on the website and I clicked on our products and I saw D or F, but I couldn't see what was actually being rated D or an F. It just said this was bad. And I think they had two products, which we have 80 SKUs on our website and there was two products on there and it was Reddit True Tide and BPC 157. But you had to log in to create an account. So first of all, I would say to the people at Finric, I understand you're a software company, you gotta have your model. But when people see that, they have to log into create now, create an account. Most people are not gonna submit their email. They're just gonna see D or F, which hey, not our company, but again, I think it would be more fair to all the research companies if they could actually see without logging in to create an account. But hey, we have email opt-ins on our stuff, so I get it. But what I noticed is when I created an account and logged in, then I clicked on our products and guess what, dude? It was all 99% purity. So I was like, okay, what's the problem there? And then I noticed that the poor ratings, which was actually not from the Reddit True Tide, it was from the BPC, which people can't see on the front end. Right. It was just the BPC. That yeah, because all they see is the negative rating. Exactly. They just see like DRF or whatever. So I noticed that it was because we actually had slightly more in our vials than 10 milligrams on the BPC. So it wasn't a purity issue. It was a 99% plus purity across the board. Most of the tests that they sent in were 99.5% plus. What I noticed is that it was because I think we had 11 milligrams in some of the vials. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. A little bit more like, than 10 milligrams. A little bit right. more than 10 milligrams, which I understand rating down if it was like 15 or 20 milligrams. but Or six lot, or seven yeah, or, eight or, or less. Absolutely. If it was less, obviously that would be an issue. I mean, if it's 9.8 or 9.9, you know, like, hey, it's hard to get everything perfect from a manufacturer. But they were rated badly because we had slightly more. And that would kind of be like, to me, again, just as a consumer, within a range, if you get a bag of chips and there's a little bit more of the chips in the bag, nobody's really gonna be mad. And I think it's actually more value for the consumer. Without a doubt. Especially when you're reconstituting and stuff. Like I said, if it's double or even like 50% more, that could be you know, not the best for consumers. So I noticed that on the front end, which I think is unfair. Again, it's not my company, but I think it's unfair to negatively rate companies in such a bad yeah. light when some of the other companies on there actually had less than 98 or less than 99% purity. I noticed that there were some that were 98% purity to which they got rated an A or a B on some of their products. And in my opinion, if you're looking at 11 milligrams and a 10 milligram vial of BPC versus a 98.1% purity versus a 99.5% purity, I think the weighting should be more on the purity, obviously within reason. Um, than necessarily like a slight variation in the amount of the vial. Well, so. I think to that point, to be, because I want you to continue, but um, most people don't know what research grade means, right? So if we explain research grade, 98% or less or 98.2 or 98.5 is not the highest quality. It's not purity. It's not compounded format. Uh, excuse me. It's not compounded pure, pure, the purity or efficacy. It's considered research grade. So very truthfully, 
if you're not getting a 99% or higher, you're, you're selling research grade products, which doesn't mean they're not efficient or they're not efficacious, but they're not actual the quality that people are demanding in the marketplace. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think too, when you look on the site, there's, I always say in the research world, almost everyone is doing their best to do the right thing. Right. And most people are getting these made at probably 10 to 15 factories around the world that are manufacturing. All in Hong Kong. Most, yeah, yeah, most of the peptides. And everyone's doing the right thing of trying to get the products into the research marketplace. So I don't think there's very many, I'm sure there's a few nefarious companies out there that are intentionally doing wrong things to people. And again, some peptides could come from the same place and get tested at one lab and get tested at another lab. Right. I think that brings up my next point, which is as far as the testing goes, what I, my understanding is people are doing is they're sending them in either to Fenric or other places and then they're having them tested. And we don't know necessarily the back end testing of like what do those testing labs right. look like and what are their grading standards versus some that we may send to it. And I'm not saying they're wrong, but I'm just saying to the user on the front end, there's not really a lot of transparency. They just see a D or an F. They don't really know what goes into that. What does the endotoxin testing look like? What does the HPLC testing look like? And all of those metrics. Right. And actually have a way to communicate to the user what that means. Because again, this it's hard enough for people to understand how to use a peptide, yes. let alone what goes into the purity testing and everything. And again, I, th I applaud Fenric because that needs to be something that is brought to the marketplace where there's education around testing and everything like that. But I did wanna say, and I won't name names, I know for a fact that some of our products come from a lab in the United States to which the company that was one of the, or the top rated on there also comes from the right. same lab. So, Conflict of interest, anyone? <laughs> exactly. So uh, what I'm saying is that our products are manufactured in some, some instances, because we have multiple locations. In some instances, they were coming from the exact same lab of the company that was rated number one and number two and number three on there. So it's kind of funny because it's like, if you're gonna rate someone a D or an F, and this coming from the same place, <sighs> It's kind of hard to say like, okay, they're a DNF if they're being manufactured in the same place, you know, as a company that's in business, how are you to know like which one is different with we're getting third party testing that's telling us and then also getting stuff from the manufacturer that's saying it, it's purity. But I also wanted to bring up the idea of a tech company and Jay and I both have a background in the real estate world and we're very familiar with how tech has taken over and integrated itself in real estate, which is gonna do in every industry. But what I think, dude, and you can speak to this too, I hope this doesn't become a pay for play deal right. like Zillow or Yelp and all yep. these other platforms have done. Surely looking like that. Yeah, because look at what Zillow did. They filled a gap in the marketplace. They hey, they helped bring MLS access to users to be able to search for houses on, online, which is great. However, I know from the back end world of real estate, what happened is the agents would pay the most to get the best ratings on there. And then you have a conflict of interest where people that are paying the most or feeding the most money into the company, which again, if the company is supposed to be based on transparency, if they're feeding the most into the company, they're gonna get rated the highest. And I'm not saying that's going on right now, but the potential- The precedent exists. has been set. Exactly, so. Yeah, I mean, so there's just one other thing I would say that he left off and, um, and we can't prove this of course, but we do know that the company that you mentioned, again, without naming names that's behind this, is a company that we were buying a, a lot of our peptides for that we since have stopped buying from. Uh, not completely, but we're not buying from them as much as we're buying from a couple of other manufacturers now. Uh, and again, they're USA-based manufacturers. So, you know, is there a bias? Are they angry? Are there, is there, you know, um, what do they call it? Sour grapes? I don't know. And, I, and I'm not gonna put that op openly and speculate that that is, that is the case, but it could be, right? Because there's clearly something that is off about their their right ratings of the highest three rated companies when we know that they're getting them from the same place that we are. And then again, going back to what you were saying, if we're giving people more in the research chemical space at 99 plus percent efficacy and purity, no one is gonna complain. Yeah. That's absolutely absurd. I understand, like you said, that you know, getting it right and being within you know a couple of percentage points or you know tenths of a percentage points is important, but Nobody in the research chemical using world is gonna complain about getting more of the highest quality and potency than getting less. 
If they're getting less, it's a different story. If they're getting 97 or 98%, again, research grade products, then that warrants a much lower grade than somebody like us who got the highest percentage from a COA uh, testing procedure and then was, was, like you said, you know, uh, de demerited or just delimited or whatever you want to call it because we were overfilling our vials, you know, with 0.5 to 0.1 or even one milligram, which again, nobody in the using community is going to complain about. So I think if we're looking at this from an apples to, you know, apples to apples versus apples to orange comparison, there's absolutely no way in the world that BioLongevity Lab should be rated a D or if it was an F or whatever it is. And then, you know, the last point is, now we're already seeing our competitors, you know, shout out to all the competitors out there. You know, the more the merrier. Obviously, it's a peptides represent crypto to the healthcare system, right? It's decentralized. It's giving people the opportunity to become the proactive scientists of their health, which is a great thing, right? That's what we want. But at the same time, you can't be a competitor slash research chemical company and go out into the marketplace and start saying, oh, you know, how can I kiss your ass or how can I, you know, bow down to you and you give me favorable treatment. So, I mean, it's exactly what Hunter is saying. It's already clearly setting a precedent for a pay to play model to evolve. And if that's where Finric goes, then Hunter and I will just, I'll speak for Hunter and I'll speak for myself. And obviously for all the owners at BioLongevity Labs, we're not going to be a party to that. We will not be in a pay for play model because just as Hunter said, I mean, I was in the real estate industry. My wife was in the real estate industry. We watched Zillow and then Yelp and all of these companies devolve as people started paying them more money for more influence. And if that's the way Finric is going to be, then it's not an unbiased, it's not an unbiased site. And everyone who's watching this video, who's out there purchasing research chemicals, whether it's peptides, small molecules or bioregulators should be aware of that. Yeah, I think another important point to bring up too that I didn't notice, and again, I've looked through extensively, maybe it's on there. They don't talk about sourcing. No. And everything that we have is manufactured in the labs here in the United States. Yes. So there are people here in the United States that are finishing our peptides, doing everything that they need to do from a synthesis standpoint here in the United States with our peptides. And I think that's important, again, are peptides from China bad? No, I've injected thousands of shots right, of peptides right, right. that came off the boat from China and yep. I still am here yep. doing completely fine. Like peptides from China are not necessarily bad, but for us, it's important to have that extra layer of quality built in to know that they're made here in the United States. And I think that's something too, that if they're working on their product, that could be a very big feature is like, hey, where are these peptides coming from? Are they Chinese or are they made in the US? So the consumer knows. And if a consumer wants to buy Chinese peptides because they're cheaper, go for it. Yep. If they want to pay an extra premium for peptides that are made here in the United States because that's what it's worth, then they should be able to do that too. So. Yeah, no, I mean, 100%. So we appreciate you guys watching this video here today. Uh, if you or your friend or family member or loved one is interested in purchasing peptides, of course, head over to biolongevitylabs.com. As Hunter just said, we do sell some of the highest quality USA made premier peptides, bioregulators, and small molecules in the world. And you can always use one of our affiliate codes to take 15% off. That's either JAYC or Hunter W. So we appreciate you guys from Jay Campbell. He's Hunter Williams. Peace.